Many producers nowadays are using transient designers and for a good reason. They give you so much control over your sound. It's amazing. What many people don't know is that the first transient designer actually was built in the mid 90s by SPL aka Sound Performance Lab. And back then it was a revolution because it meant that you could control the transients of your sound without affecting the overall dynamics. For those of you who don't know what a transient is, it is actually the initial hit or phase of a sound. And transients are critical to distinguish sounds. In fact, if you would only listen to the end portion, to the tail of a sound, you couldn't distinguish between a drum sample or a piano sample, because the transient is so crucial to the initial characteristics of a sound. The Transient Designer 4 gives you exactly what it says it would. Four separate transient designers, which can either be operated in mono, which means every channel can be dialed in separately, or in stereo. And that can be done by using the link switch. And then the left-hand side becomes the master channel and is taking care of the parameters for the left and the right hand side. The parameters are well laid out and easy to understand. You have attack and sustain for every channel. Attack gives you exactly what it says it would. It enhances or smoothens out the initial portion of the transient. If I would turn it clockwise, then I get a more pronounced transient, more attack more of that initial hit that I want. If I have a sound that is too sharp or too uh, overblown at the beginning, then I can use the anti-clockwise setting and decrease the initial hit. The same is true for the sustain. If I want to shorten sounds, for example, the eye bass, where the <laughs> bass player is a little bit untight, then I would go anti-clockwise and I'm good to go. On the other hand, if I want more room information on a drum kit, for example, then I would turn it clockwise and get the sustain portion of that particular sound and emphasize it a little bit more. In a traditional sense, I like the way that the transit designer is laid out because it allows me just to dial in some settings and I'm good to go. I have to say that this basic concept is really, really good because sometimes you just wanna have something that gives you control over the most basic characteristics of a sound, and that's it. And four processes actually are quite enough. Particularly on drums, I would just use it on three or four sources maximum, snare, kick drum, maybe the hi-hat, and that's it. I wouldn't need even more channels if you are in a traditional uh, setup. But if you, of course, want to put out a complete mix on the desk, then yeah, go for a second one and then you have eight channels, which is great.
Like I said, the transit designer was kind of a revolution back then. I know some producers that started producing in the 70s, 80s and early 90s. And for them, it was absolutely a problem when they had to go back and do a revision of a mixing session. Let's say, for example, you have a band project and you have the drummer, you have the right drum kit, you have your 12 mics, your six mics or your eight mics. And you start the recording and back in that time, that meant it was printed on tape, maybe in an early version of Pro Tools. Nonetheless, the sound was done. If you would go back to that sound and later in the production process, you would find out that the drums are either too sharp or too dull, you would have to re-record everything, which meant more time spent in the studio, more money spent for that production. That was sometimes a big, big problem. The transient designer, on the other hand, gave you more control over that. You could take out the sharpness of a drum kit or the initial hit. You could add more punch if you wanted it that way. And that gave you so much more freedom in your production process. On the other hand, for the electronic music producers, for example, the Chemical Brothers, the transient designer became a staple tool just because you could really play around with samples in a way that was never been done before. You could add more punch to a old vinyl sample, a clap sound, and start to play around and bend the sound in a way that was never possible before.
As with everything, you shouldn't overuse transient designers. When I started out, I wanted to use it on everything. I just cranked up the attack time and just had always those popping out transients, which, which was kind of ridiculous. So as with everything, if you use it well balanced, it can absolutely elevate your production. So be aware that you will have a honeymoon phase and you will use it on everything. But then if you start to understand how sounds are actually working, you will use it a tad different, I think. Nowadays, we have so many transient designers available. It's sometimes ridiculous. We have plugins, we have different manufacturers, and it's safe to say that the transient designer 4 is the most basic one, which is a good thing. You have four channels for a separate transient designer purposes, and I absolutely love that. When I'm surrounded by that much gear in the studio and I'm sitting on the desk, it is actually a bliss to have a device that is reduced to its most important parameters. Because you're in the actual production process, that means you just want to get the job done. You want to sit there, you have, for example, some sounds that need a little bit more transient control, then you dial that in, or they are a little bit too long, for example, a DI bass, then you take it a little bit out and that's it. You just want to concentrate on the production process, nothing more. And the Transient Designer 4 gives you exactly that. That is my review of the Transient Designer 4 by SPL, and I hope you now understand why you should add a transient designer to your arsenal. I love transient designers and if not overused, you can actually use them in almost every production. I hope this was helpful and I see you in the next video.